in um, misdemeanor cases, we only see six in one alternate. Right. So, but other than uh, and that decision is theirs. And the law, they have to take as I give it to them. And in that way, they decide the case. Once they know and all agree on the facts, then they can try to apply the law to those facts and decide whether or not a person's guilty or innocent or whether or not in a civil case that person has uh, a right to recover the damages they want or not. The difference with a judge is that, uh, you know, we pretty much know the law and understand the law. Right. And, but it's only one person making that decision. And so I don't know that either one is better, but you do have a constitutional right to have a jury, and it's your choice as to whether you want so to it's waive it. it's an option. It's an option. Okay. And a lot of times people uh, talk it over with their lawyer, and it's just a matter of strategy. The lawyer might say this is a simple case, it's pretty clear, you know, we think the judge will do a good job, or it could be the reputation of the judge to be very fair, and they, they, they don't mind taking a chance with just one person looking at right. the facts. Sometimes they feel, depending on the facts of how their case looks, that they might be better off presenting it to a number of people and letting them make that collective decision. So it's up to really the persons before the court, and both sides have to, you know, in a criminal case, have to waive their right to have a jury. And in a civil case, uh, mm -hmm. both sides, it's usually non-jury unless someone requests a jury. So it's a bit of a win-win situation, could you be. could say. It's like a 50-50 chance. Uh, let's verify a little bit about the, um, you mentioned it earlier about how those reality shows of court and the judge shows that are on, how realistic are those? in the actual court. Obviously you guys say that you definitely try not to have the fights and all that, mm -hmm. but um, versus the closed doors, we see something else on TV obviously to make it more interesting for the audience and the viewers, but also for intense cases, serious criminals, intense cases, how realistic are those being handled in the court system? Um, well, you're never going to see criminal cases on the TV shows. Right. If you notice, it's always somebody complaining about, you right. know, some injury that they had. Maybe somebody took their dog or, or they're suing for yeah, a lot of money. Yeah, very minimal. Yeah. And you get very aggressive uh, people that wanting to be, obviously, right. to tell their story. But concentrating on the serious uh, criminals, the serious, because you've mentioned, in, um, I'm sure anyone running for uh, a position in the election wants to keep the community safe sure. and wants to know that they're going to elect someone to make a choice for the community for the safety of the community. So how does that get handled in the court? What's the vibe like? Well, in court, it's 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 different than anything you'd see on television first right. and foremost because we they just there is no they're not really judging um, a specific jurisdiction. Those are pretty much arbitrators. So those people that come into court, they sign off on an agreement that we're going to accept this judge's decision. So it's, it's for television. So yes. it's kind of set up. Um, and there are no criminal jurisdictions. There's no prosecutor. So they would never hear a criminal case in that kind of setting. Um, this is a way to settle civil disputes. But when you're coming into a real court, it's a lot different because you do have a prosecutor who elects uh, which cases that they want to charge, mm -hmm. and that's the prosecutor's um, decision. And then once the case is charged, then it comes before the court and for a pretrial, and then the court is either going to set it for a trial or the person's going to decide whether they plead guilty. And so um, the decision-making process comes if they want a trial. And that's what goes on behind the closed doors with the jury. Mm -hmm. Once the jury gets ready to deliberate, and it's a, it's a very intense process uh, where the jurors, we don't know what they do because they're closed doors, but when they talk to you afterwards, they tell you that they listen hard, they listen, they have questions, and they talk it over. And sometimes they disagree, and it can get contentious in there. But from what I find, when they're done, 
the decision is usually well thought out and it's fair and it's just to the people that are on both sides of the issue. And that's a lot different than what you're going to see on TV because sometimes TV is just there for, for the interest, entertainment back the value. Mm -hmm. Now, as uh, being qualified for an individual to have the qualities for the justice of the Michigan State Supreme Court, mm -hmm. what categories would you list for someone to have that position? Well, um, quite frankly, you just have to be a lawyer. You don't have to be a judge to serve on the Michigan Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. um, but it's always helpful to have the broadest base of experience that you can. I, I, I believe that judges that have served on a lower court, trial court of some kind, actually have that practical experience of knowing uh, the procedure and how the procedure works its way out and how it plays out in court how the decisions affect the people, and if you've practiced a lot before courts, obviously you understand what justice is from one side of the bench of as course. you're representing people, and then you've had the experience of actually passing justice and judgment on people from the other side of the bench. And so I think a quali the qualities are that you need to have a great educational background, you need to have that kind of a practical, well-rounded experience. I think you need to have a very broad base of experiences and viewpoint because uh, you're going to see all types of cases from all walks of life. And the broader your experience and the more open your mind is, then the better justice I think you'll be because you're going to listen and you're going to reevaluate your position and you're going to come out to the right decision. Uh, I also think that um, diversity is great on the court because this court should represent the views and opinions and philosophies of people from all across the state. And that way, when those, just, those justices have to discuss a case and decide what cases they want to take, how the law uh, should evolve, uh, and where the law has been, then they're getting a better, more well-rounded view on that issue that they can then talk and decide. And so then I think the case comes out fair. No matter what the split is of how many decide one way versus the other, at least right. if there's been a meaningful, open-minded conversation, then you know those decisions are going to be fair. So you, you really want somebody on there that goes in without a preconceived notion on any case. Now, we're an ethnic group. We cater to the Arab American community. Why is the Arab American vote important to you? Well, every vote is important because but uh, but the arab american community just like other ethnic communities it's very important because we came to this country just about everybody is an immigrant here except Correct. the native americans and so the uh, arab american community for sure immigrated here in hopes of having more opportunities a better life and to have democracy where they're not unfairly judged and they know that they will have a fair shot, just like everybody else, if they get into a problem or they have a legal concern. It's important, because I've been a friend of uh, every community, mm -hmm. especially um, the Chaldean community and the Arab American community generally. And it's important to me that they understand what their rights are and that they're educated, not just here living, but they're actually educated on the choices that they have. Because the Supreme Court race is the most important race, in my view, on the ballot, more important than the president. Because these judges are going to make the final decisions on the state of the law in Michigan. You're very well spoken. I really enjoyed having this interview with you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for having me. And I Definitely. appreciate your willingness to get the message out so that people are informed and that they know who they're voting for on November 6th. Definitely. November 6th, the voting day. Thank you at home for watching and always watching Middle Eastern American television right here. I've been your host, Sarah Masood. Thank you.